Hello and welcome to this video about Redox Reactions. In this video I will try to give you a basic understanding of what a Redox Reaction is. After that is done, I will show you a way on how to form and balance equations for Redox Reactions. So let's start right off with a definition. The term Redox is a combination of the words reduction and oxidation. It refers to all reactions in which electrons are transferred from one reactant to another. This process of transfer requires one reactant to release electrons and another reactant to accept electrons. The process of the first reactant releasing electrons is to be referred to as oxidation while the process of the second reactant accepting electrons is called reduction. But beware, not all reactions involve an actual transfer of electrons. For example, those involving covalent bonds. This explanation and our example will cover redox reactions involving electron transfer. Hence you are not going to learn about covalent bonds in this video. Back to our topic. Reduction and oxidation sound strange to you? No problem, I'll explain those to you with two simple definitions. Our first definition is the one for oxidation. An oxidation is the loss of electrons or an increase in oxidation state by an atom, molecule or ion. Let me clarify that with this little sketch. This is reactant A. It is four electrons in an oxidation state of zero. By oxidation, reactant A loses two electrons. Hence, it has lost two negative charges. Its oxidation number is now plus two. Now that we have a basic understanding of an oxidation, let's see what the definition for reduction is. And here we have reactant B. Its oxidation state is zero. By reduction, it gains two electrons. Therefore, its oxidation number decreases to minus two. Great. So now we know how reductions and oxidations work. I guess it's time to move on with our topic and I thought you might like to see some examples. I gathered three common ones. My first example is a generic combustion. Hydrogen and oxygen, both gaseous, react to form liquid water. Basically, every combustion is a redox reaction, so also the ones in your combustion engine in your car. The second example is the oxidation of metals. Magnesium and oxygen react to form magnesium oxide, which is the white powder you might have seen gymnasts use to keep their hands dry. The third and last example represents something that is happening in your body continuously. It is called cellular respiration. Glucose and oxygen react to form carbon dioxide and water. Those were just a few examples of the many redox reactions, with many of them affecting our daily lives. You should by now have an idea of what a redox reaction is. If not, do not be afraid to watch the first part of the video again. Just click this button to do so. If you are rather confident about your newly gained knowledge, we may continue to forming and balancing redox reactions. I will demonstrate how to form and balance the equation of a redox reaction in seven steps using a simple example. In the first step, we will determine the oxidation number of our reactants. And then, in the second step, we will form separate equations for oxidation and reduction. In the third step, we will balance the charges in our equations with ions. In the fourth step, we will balance the amount of substance with water. In the fifth step, we will adjust the equations according to their quantity of electrons. In the sixth step, 
we will add up both equations. And in the seventh and final step, we will check whether we can cancel down anything or not. These are the seven steps we are going to use for this example. You might find it helpful to use a similar system to solve redox reaction equations. It will significantly reduce the amount of your careless mistakes. So let's begin right away with step one. This is the incomplete equation for copper and nitric acid reacting to form copper ions and nitric oxide, just as raw as one would have taken it from a word problem in an exam. Now let's see what this equation looks like after adding the oxidation numbers. Copper has an oxidation number of zero because it is in its elemental state. Hydrogen is if it is part of a molecule, very likely to have an oxidation number of plus one, as is oxygen to have an oxidation number of minus two. I recommend using these two as your starting point when determining oxidation numbers. But don't be careless. Hydrogen and oxygen have an oxidation number of zero when they are in an elemental state and not part of a molecule. If we assume that the hydrogen in nitric acid has an oxidation number of plus one and the three oxygen atoms have minus two, nitrogen has an oxidation number of plus five. The copper ion has a charge of plus two, so its oxidation number is plus two also. For nitric oxide, we will again assume that oxygen has an oxidation number of minus two. This indicates that nitrogen now has an oxidation number of plus two. I recommend you always double check the oxidation numbers and make sure their sum is zero in each molecule. Now we have completed step one. This is the clean equation with added oxidation numbers. We are continuing with step two. This step is about forming the equations for oxidation and reduction. The oxidation number of copper changes from zero to plus two. Therefore, it loses two electrons. This is an oxidation. The oxidation number of nitrogen changes from plus five to plus two. Therefore, it gains three electrons. This is a reduction. The third step is about balancing charges with ions. To do this, you will have to determine whether your reaction takes place in an acidic medium or a basic medium. One would use hydronium ions for acidic and hydroxide ions for basic mediums. Our example has an acidic medium, so we are going to balance it with hydronium ions. The charges in our oxidation equation are balanced already, although our reduction equation needs three hydronium ions on the left side to balance the charges. Now that we have added the hydronium ions, they can just disappear during our reaction. So we are going to add water in step four. We are adding five water molecules to the product side of our reduction equation. Because we have five excess oxygen atoms and ten excess hydrogen atoms. Now, in step five, we are going to adjust the amount of electrons in both equations so we can add them up easily later on. The easiest way to do this is by using the least common multiple which in this case would be six. So we are going to multiply our oxidation equation by three and our reduction equation by two. As you can see, both equations are now involving six electrons. All right, we have now prepared both equations to be united to one redox reaction equation. All we have to do now is add them up. As final step, we can check if we can cancel down anything. In our case, that is only the six electrons on either side. There you are. Our redox equation is done. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and from all of us here I'd like to wish you happy studying and God bless my friend.